So how does it feel to get censored by Joe Rogan? It was a relief because, um, well, it's kind of a long story. I know he didn't really, for people listening, you didn't really get censored by him. The video, no. they just, you guys just decided not to publish it for for some reasons. Well, a couple but there was a lot of people that were going crazy about that. Yeah, a couple of reasons. Well, the one reason was, well, first of all, let me, let me just give you a little of the background on this. Um, I had been on Rogan with Graham Hancock, and the question of what kind of energy technology may the ancient cultures might they have been using, if any. And uh, I don't remember exactly. I think maybe Graham or Rogan, Joe, looked at me, kind of deferred to me, and I kind of mentioned offhand that, you know, I, I had an idea what it may have been. Um, and before we went in, uh, Graham and I had discussed that we were not going to get into the whole energy dimension of talking about ancient cultures and stuff. Because for one thing, that's a little bit outside of Graham's purview. He's looking at artifacts and, and I mean, he's looking at different kind of evidence. But the question is hovering over always. And I think it had come up to the, the, the question had come up to... Uh, you know the the, the quarrying of the in transport of these great stones and and you know the I mean Ben will address that I'm sure in our conversation today the 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 growing evidence that they did have some kind of our ancients the ancient peoples did have some kind of uh, some kind of a technology that has been lost okay so I just kind of dropped an offhand remark that you know I kind of thought. Um, I had some ideas along that lines, and instantly Joe honed in on that and insisted I talk about it. And I, I didn't intend to talk about it because I felt at the time what I knew and what I had learned to talk about it would have been premature. Uh, because that's the way I like to vet things before I start talking about them like I know what the hell I'm talking about, right? So um, anyways... Joe kind of pressed the issue, and I so I kind of got into it a little bit, and then he asked me if I would come back to talk about it in greater detail, and I think, uh, and I said sure, and I think I went back in November of last year, mm. um, but in the interim, a couple of things happened. Um, as a result of what I did disclose on Joe's show, I mentioned. Malcolm Bendel, the inventor, that I had been having a dialogue with at that point for about seven years while he had been building and testing prototypes um, and explaining to me the science and ideas behind it, right? So when I first talked to him, you know, I was like, okay, sounds interesting, but I don't know. I don't have the command of the, the science to really determine whether this is legitimate or not. So over the course of the years, I learned additional things, and I had a conversation with a um, an Australian author named Roland Perry, also an investigative reporter who wrote actually wrote a book about Malcolm. He uh, he did the uh, probably his, one of those most famous books is his biography of Mel Gibson. Oh um, wow! Hmm. So I had a long conversation with him on the phone, and as a result of that. I kind of came away, well, it sounds like this is legitimate. Now, this guy, Malcolm, that I'd been talking to, it sounded like he had led a pretty interesting life and was, like a lot of geniuses, somewhat eccentric. But what I learned was, and I'm not going to get into the specifics of this, is that he got caught up in some scandals in the 90s and early 2000s based upon the fact that he had been a... Uh, his background was in geochemistry, and he was an oil prospector, and he discovered an... Uh, an oil deposit that was coveted by one of the mainstream uh, energy companies, and he held a license to that to the the drilling rights, and they wanted that license. So what they did was uh, embarked on a campaign to scare away uh, any potential investors. So they bribed politicians, they bribed journalists to basically concoct a smear campaign. And because of his background, there was food that they could take and exaggerate and take things out of context, just like they've done to so many, you know, like they've done to Graham Hancock. You know, when he came out with Ancient Apocalypse, I don't know how much you saw in the in the mainstream 
uh, a treatment of ancient apocalypse that, you know, he was being, Graham was being portrayed as a white supremacist, a racist, a conspiracy monger, all of this stuff. Um, this is what they do. You know, when you go out, you step outside the approved narrative, they they start throwing it at you. You know, they're doing it right now to, you know, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., trying to paint him as a complete yeah. nut job because right. he's questioned the efficacy of vaccines. And it, you're not allowed to do that. If you if you do, and, and, and the approach is always not looking at specifically what you say and what data, what facts, what evidence you bring forward, but, you know, they, they it's all character assassination. Mm. So there had been this whole slew of this stuff that had come out in the 90s, early 90s and early 2000s as a result of this whole episode. The the upshot of it was is that the the board of directors of this particular energy company ended up resigning because they got caught in the scandal. One of the big oil companies? One of the big oil companies, yeah. So as a result of that, Malcolm was so fed up with the politics and all of that that he decided that he was going to shift gears and go back to what he had been working on literally since he'd been in high school, which was alternative energy based upon uh, the uh, the control of plasma, which is the fourth state of matter. After solid, liquid, gas, you have plasma. And plasma has extremely interesting properties to it. Um, so the, the, the bottom line was this. Uh, Malcolm actually came to America... And one of the purposes he came here was, among several reasons, but one of the reasons was he was going to tutor me in the, the science and the technology. So we spent several months. I worked with um, with my colleague, Brad Young, who I've done a lot of, Ben knows him well. We, we've been doing research together, traveling, organizing tours and all this. And uh, Mike Robertson, who is the CEO of HowTube.com, where you will now find a whole lot of this stuff dealing with plasma technology. So the three of us worked with Malcolm, developed a 243-slide slideshow. Then Malcolm proceeded to do lecture, a lecture series discussing what we had built on this slideshow over something like 10 hours of lectures. Okay, now this is came after, but so he was here. I was scheduled to go on to Joe Rogan, and so myself. Brad Young, George Howard, who um, is the, uh, he's one of the, uh, I would say, primary people in the Cosmic Research Team. Yep. Uh, he does the website Cosmic Tusk, and he's been in the forefront of, uh, you know, studies about the Younger Dryas catastrophism and all of this. He wrote out there with us, um, another fellow that kind of is an assistant to me. We went out there together. I went on Joe's, and Malcolm came with before we went on the show, I asked Joe if he, I, you know, because Joe wanted me to talk about the science, and I thought, okay, here I've got the guy himself, and he's going to be able to really get into a much more explicit and accurate discussion of the science than I'm going to be able to. So I called up Joe before the, before the interview, and I said, it just so happens the inventor is here. What do you think about inviting him on, and, and we can talk about the technology and the science and, and what, what is a plasma and so on. And he said, sure. Okay, so now in the interim, Jamie, who's Joe's producer, producer, he started looking, found all of this stuff from, you know, several decades ago that was part of this smear campaign. It'd be just like if 10 years from now somebody's going, okay, who's this guy, Graham Hancock, or who is this guy? And they pull up, oh, he's this guy's a white supremacist. He's a, you know, he's a racist. He's, you know, he's out there promoting, uh, you know, conspiracy theories and all of this kind of stuff. Um, you know, there's a whole list. And if you go back through the list of these inventors and scientists that have worked on these kinds of things, all the way back to Nikola Tesla, you see that there's a repeating pattern mm -hmm. of suppression, of discrediting, of character attacks, all of that kind of stuff, right? So as we walk in to sit down, Jamie has just dumped this pile of stuff in front of Joe, and Joe is looking at it, right? Well, so my priority and goal, which was to talk about the science at that point, completely got derailed for the most part. And it got into the politics, the scandals, the conspiracy theories. And if it ever does get aired, you'll hear that I'm constantly trying to steer it back to the science. I had put together a slideshow and, 
you know. Um, and it kind of went back and forth. And Malcolm got, you know, defensive because Joe kind of went into attack mode, which, you know, had there been merit to this, would have been a valid thing to do. But mm-hmm. so the, 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 and then in the course of it, there were several comments made that really kind of encroached upon uh, a, a, a territory that had was being covered under non-disclosure agreements. That was part of it. Um, part of it was just the, the emphasis on politics. And as it's going on, I'm kind of like shaking my head and going, oh, this is not where I wanted this thing to go. I wanted to talk about plasma technology. You know, we're talking about all this other stuff. Um, so it, 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 at the end of it, we, you know, adjourn. Joe comes, catches me on the way out, and he says, hey, would it be okay with you if I um, didn't air this right away, if I spent some time vetting it? And I said, for me, it was like, yes, that's fine. It was almost like a relief to me that this was not, because I knew it was going to completely derail the conversation and the discussion. Um, so I said, I'm fine with that. And then he also asked me if I would come back on just just myself, and I agreed to that and said, sure, I would. Um, but, you know, in my mind, I wanted to get a better grip on the technology so I could talk about it knowledgeably. Mm. And also I knew that there was testing um, coming, w- was in the pipeline, and there was going to be some major testing going on. So I thought, well, let's wait until the testing is complete, and then the testing will objectively show whether or not the technology is real, whether it's legitimate or so on. And now we're, the testing is ongoing right now. There have been, like Ben made a reference to um, what happened at the Tesla Tech Conference in Albuquerque a few weeks ago. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you. I mean, you've edited that pretty, pretty, what did you? Yeah, well, a couple things to say. I mean, I, I feel like, I mean, I'm I don't know Malcolm. I've not had the chance to meet him, but I've been intensely interested in, in hearing about the technology. My and mm. particularly its relationship to things like it seems to have some properties of sacred geometry. There's mm-hmm. and and we can get into some of those topics. But you know, I've heard similar things where you talk about the you know his reputation or the fact that he's been set up and there's there's dirt that you can dig up online mm-hmm. if you search for him and and I've and certainly just through social media and other people I've had people reach out to me that are worried about you <laughs> and your association with him uh, my my response to most of that in, is usually like well you know people can be eccentric and genius often is eccentric mm-hmm. right there's very rarely do you see like geniuses and people that whether they're right or wrong, kind of have ideas that change the world. It, it doesn't seem common that they're just like regular normal people. Nikola Tesla is a great example. I mean, he was more or less pretty antisocial, probably would be, you know, not uh, not received really well. He would feel really strange to have, have met in person. Mm. So but you can separate kind of the man from the mission. As mm-hmm. Randall mentioned this earlier, right? It doesn't just if he's eccentric or these things, you know, that there's dirt on him or these things that are, have been said about him. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's wrong you can you can separate those things so i've personally been interested in kind of the technology and and to find out you know let's get it tested let's i've seen some of the theory i've seen some videos of of devices uh doing things but there's always been the talk of the testing and and i've i've been talked to people that are involved in this and then yeah recently uh and in albuquerque at the i think it was the tesla convention i wasn't there but i've I've spoken to people who were and i think you can find videos of it mm-hmm. on youtube they malcolm was there they brought a device they they had it hooked up to i think a a 20 kilovolt generator it had the it had the the whole thunderstorm thing attached to it and there were a number of people there i mean that's a you know kind of an alternative en- energy mm-hmm. conference and you typically have a lot of physicists and chemists and very qualified people that are that are interested in this thing engineers that that turn up and there was a number of people with their own instruments like spectrometers and gas analyzers and they hooked it up to this device that's running off you know it's basically as far as i understand it there's a couple of different varieties of it but one variety is is one that is attached to a regular internal combustion engine and Mm -hmm. they were seeing some frankly remarkable results just on the on the spot and you can see this in you know, on, on YouTube, there's been a couple other reports about it on, on the internet, but, you know, it's doing things like removing carbon monoxide from the exhaust. You, you're increasing the percentage of oxygen. In fact, potentially even producing net oxygen might be a, a result mm-hmm. of this. But 
Yeah, I mean, and the CO2 levels go down, plus your engine efficiency goes way, way up. It's kind of like a feedback loop that, that is, it works in tandem with, a, with an engine. So that, that to me is very interesting. And, and, I, and what, I, you know, what I think it all needs is, is kind of you know, third-party independent verification and testing, which is, I'm sure, something that's being pursued. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was, it was th that, that Tesla conference and the data that came out of that was, was pretty interesting. And I mean, I'm personally, technology aside, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in some of the theory behind it uh, and its potential application as something that may not necessarily be a new discovery so much as a rediscovery. Because as Randall mm -hmm. said, I'm fairly convinced that, that there's plenty of evidence that suggests there were some powerful tools and techniques and technologies being employed far in the past. I think it's the only way to explain some of the signatures we see in stone, some of the logistical achievements that have been made. And, you know, at the bottom at the, the bottom line of what that means is that there must have been a power source to 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 have this technology operate. So it's this is a potential candidate, I think. I don't know. It's it's that's I, I, I'm interested potential. in it from that perspective. Now, yeah. do you think this plasma technology, you said it's a possibility, but like how much of a possibility is that this stuff is responsible for some of the moving thousand ton stones or cutting some of these Im immensely like hard stones? Well, let me put it this way. I, you know, now that I'm, I've got a better grasp of what it is, the more I learn about it, the more it seems like it would be the prime candidate really? for an alternative techno technology and a technology upon which an entire civilization could be based. Yes. That, that seems to me to become increasingly likely. Um, because it, it is so ubiquitous. The whole idea of plasma technology in the fourth state of matter um, is real. And there have been a lot of scientists who have been studying it for decades. And so it's well-known phenomena. And it lends itself to all of these kinds of things that, you know, the alternative energy community and alternative ancient history community have speculated about. It seems to fill a lot of the, the, the gaps in that knowledge. And so <clears throat> ultimately it's going to be, you know, the testing and building of prototypes. And that's why Malcolm's got a, 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 a nonprofit organization called the Strike Foundation. So they've, they've applied for some patents, which are applications of the technology. I'll give you an example, uh, a chimney scrubber that would be, uh, you know, uh, on a coal plant, a coal fired plant. Um, so they've got a patent on that, right? But the basic principles uh, are being put out uh, for free access with the idea to encourage people to take those principles and work with them, test them. Mm. So we got somebody right now who's going to be attempting sort of a backyard mechanic who's going to be doing a retrofit of his car with the technology. And that's one of the... Uh, one of the applications is you can retrofit any kind of um, engine or generator that operates on fossil fuel, whether it's regular gasoline or kerosene or natural gas or diesel, and it'll have the same effect. The, the data is out there. I mean, I was talking with George Howard the other day, and he's saying that people are, are building these. Like, if, if you yeah. go sit yeah. through the 10 hours of content, it's it's out there, and you want to you have the skills to, to want to try and build one of these and use it as an application you can, and as Randall said, the people are. Uh, I've seen a few different videos on YouTube of people um, building these or, or, or running these these systems. So it's a yeah. I mean, I know that the data is going out there, um, uh, at least in the on the, the theory side, and 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 you know, it's contained in those ten hours of lectures that are up on YouTube, I believe. Yes, it is. Yeah. So it makes it makes the engines. You said twice as efficient. About twice as efficient. Yes. So I guess like the the problem will be figuring a way to scale it up, right? Uh, they've scaled it up to a 400 kilowatt generator. So that's, you know, industrial level. And he said, Malcolm said in one of his presentations that this is, it all is based off of sacred geometry. Well, yes, because for example, the, the spheres are in the ratio of four to three to two. Um, and that's your fundamental number for 432. And the lengths of the pipe, the diameters of the pipe, all of these things are in those ratios that we get from the ancient canon of sacred numbers, which is interesting to me. 
Wow. Otherwise, they they don't work as effectively if you don't use the um, those particular ratios. Okay. 